Hello, my name is Jens Juhl Nielsen. I'm the CEO of the municipal waste company on the island of Bornholm called Bofa. Uh, and I'm here today uh, to talk about uh, our ideas and our visions for the next uh, 12 years. But before I do that, let me just introduce our island. It's a Danish island and it's located in the southern part of the Baltic Sea, as you can see. Here we, live, here we are, about 40,000 people uh, and half a million tourists every year. Now, the vision that uh, we have uh, set as a goal for 2032 uh, has as its core idea that by 2032, we will no longer uh, incinerate waste. Our uh, incineration plant will in 2032 be decommissioned and no new plant will be built. Instead, we will uh, experience a change from uh, linear to circular economy by eliminating incineration and landfill and only using reuse and recycling as a uh, waste management strategy or waste handling strategies. Uh, and in connection with this, uh, I would like to talk about uh, Zero Waste Bonholm, a uh, partnership between uh, ourselves and other interested parties. And I'm very happy to do that here at uh, Green Week 2020 and to introduce uh, Zero Waste Bonholm to all of you. Now, let me talk a little bit about what our plans are and how we, we plan to team up and how we plan to include hopefully some of you. We believe that uh, as new innovation comes to the market and as uh, new ideas come to the market, those who are first movers are rewarded. If you are a first mover, then you will have a lead in the market. And that is exactly what we are offering uh, to our partners and, uh, um, and uh, friends who will work with us uh, in, this, in this project. We believe that we have uh, three advantages on, uh, on the island of Bonholm. One, uh, the fact that we have a laboratory, so to speak, with 40,000 people, with industry, uh, agrarian sector, and so on. Uh, really really a, a mini uh, society with all sectors represented. Um, which is ideal for research and development. Uh, secondly, uh, we already have uh, good uh, connections with uh, the rest of Europe. We cooperate in a number of fields uh, and, and this will also be beneficial uh, in, uh, in working on Bonholm. And third, um, we are based on multi-stakeholder, we use a multi-stakeholder perspective which will uh, give our partners the best opportunities uh, for cooperating with as many relevant partners as possible. We use a partnership model uh, that will give the, the benefits uh, that every partner needs. And uh, we hope very much that some of these partners might be listening here to us today. Uh, the way we see it, there are a number of mega challenges uh, and we have identified so far at least three of these mega challenges uh, within respectively the fields of bioeconomy, uh, households and uh, reuse and repair. Each of these uh, again rest on a number of circular challenges. Uh, and uh, as you can see from this slide right here, um, there we go. We have uh, identified a number uh, of these circular challenges that the mega challenges rest on. And for each of these, again, uh, a number of specific projects have been designed to uh, answer the question or answer the challenges. Let me just exemplify. Uh, if we take, for instance, uh, I, can, I can give you three examples here of, um, uh, of uh, uh, projects that we are currently undertaking. And of course, these are just examples and many other projects uh, will come in the future 
hopefully some of them uh, in cooperation with, with some of you. Uh, right now we are uh, offering a tender uh, for household uh, collection of waste. And uh, in doing so, uh, we have been working now for a number of years on developing a, a more innovative cooperation between the public sector and the private sector. And this tender is, uh, uh, is the, the result so far uh, of this development. So this is, this is not a traditional tender, but a tender based on innovation and based on cooperation uh, rather than just on uh, the public sector ordering a specific service. Uh, next, I would like to uh, talk for a few seconds about Waste Man, uh, a project uh, based uh, on Bonholm, of course, and uh, focused uh, on uh, waste collection uh, and co-creation uh, based on um, citizen involvement. Uh, and, and as a, a curiosity, you might say, uh, you can see here uh, our mock-up for autonomous uh, waste collection. Uh, the idea is that at some point we might be able to collect waste uh, autonomously and independently uh, of uh, uh, other services so we can have a waste on demand solution. This is inspired by the Norwegian Postal Service, by the way. Uh, and the third example here is Gamle uh, Murstein, old bricks, literally uh, in Danish. Uh, which is a project with bricks and building materials being reused, cleaned, uh, uh, reused uh, in new buildings uh, where, where they will serve uh, as uh, building materials, of course, and, and they will, um, 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 and, and by using that, uh, we will not uh, be using new building materials thus uh, eliminating uh, quite a bit of resource and CO2. Uh, production. So these are three examples uh, of what we're doing right now, but these are only examples and this is what we're doing right now. We hope that uh, you have ideas uh, and would like to join us. If you do, we will very much like to talk to you. Anyone who has ideas on how do you change the society from a linear uh, production society to a circular please let us know what your ideas are. This is what we want to do on our island. And maybe uh, once you've seen what we can do on our island, it can be scaled and used in, in your home country or really anywhere in the world. Thank you very much. We are the Danish Environmental Cluster and our mission is to create innovation and growth within Danish companies who have or need environmental technology solutions. In order to do this, we connect the private sector, research institutions and the public sector and facilitate projects which accelerate innovation and spur the green transition. Environmental technologies contribute to the SDGs as they all focus on improving the environment or minimizing the negative impacts on the environment. Danish companies and knowledge institutions are particularly great at creating solutions within these six areas. Our vision as the Danish environmental cluster is to create collaborations and use our innovation tools to make the Danish environmental companies become world leading. With 800 members from all over Denmark, including SMEs, startups, corporates, academia and municipalities, and with offices in every Danish region, we're a national cluster for all stakeholders within environmental technology. We connect our members and introduce them to innovation opportunities and activities both in Denmark and abroad. Some of the tools we use to innovate green solutions are matchmaking, networking activities, knowledge sharing and collaborative innovation. We're working with partners from all over the world other clusters, universities and cities amongst others. Denmark is famous for our green solutions and we want to help keep this position as a front runner in environmental technologies and inspire the world to develop and use green solutions. If you think you can help us realize our vision and benefit from working with us, please get in touch. We would love to hear from you.
Sarah Schäfige is a researcher at Technical University of Denmark, working on expert systems application in different segments such as diversity and inclusion, healthcare, and engineering sectors. Product configuration systems are specific types of expert systems in the category of artificial intelligence focusing on digitalization. Sarah is working on a long-term interdisciplinary project within diverse areas which can lead to significant improvements in sustainable manufacturing. Sarah's project is also among the five finalists of SDG Tech Awards 2020 in the research category. This project has already received awards due to the economical, environmental, social, and technical impact of the research project and its impact on industries. Sarah is the winner of the Alexander Foss Made Award in 2017 and, and the Innovation Fund Denmark's Industrial Researcher Prize in 2018. Sarah has achieved a very strong industrial commitment to her research work, whilst achieving an exceptional level of academic publication. In 2019, Sarah was appointed as one of the eight ambassadors on Innovation Fund Denmark's new gender sounding board to inspire more females in technical research areas. Sarah represents as the women in technology and research to achieve higher gender equality. Sarah's research has been rewarding due to its importance and contribution to the society and industry and it is still an ongoing research as we will explain in this video. Every day, organizations are striving to create perfect places. We understand that there are numerous challenges that may arise from achieving this goal. From meeting customer and staff expectations, managing operating costs, ensuring safety and security of people, or achieving demanding sustainability targets. But our world is evolving and advancements in technologies bring new opportunities to overcome these challenges and gain efficiencies. Have you ever heard that, making your data digital helps you build a better business? Digitalization is the use of digital technologies to change a business model and provide new revenue and value producing opportunities. The goal is to sell more products with fewer resources, lower risk, and less errors for a sustainable production process. Complexity in engineering companies can be defined as the product, process, and knowledge complexities. To understate it the amount of complexity to be handled in an engineering company, we can imagine one product consists of six Lego blocks which are four in two. How many combination can you build? The answer is 1 billion different combinations. When a customer order a new product in an engineering company the consequence is additional complexity. But how can we help the companies to solve the challenge of complexity? Well, this research focus is to offer a range of solutions to develop and sell more products with fewer resources, lower risk, and less errors and complexity for a sustainable production process and of course to help customers to personalize their product or service. One way to capitalize on this is to give your customers a unique experience with a configurator. A configurator is a web or mobile interface that allows your clients to interact and customize product or services to fit their specific needs. Let's say you are selling cars. Using configurator, your client could customize a car through your website before buying and based on their preferences. They could change things from color to engine size based on the possibility you offer. The purpose of our research project is to develop and test configuration systems for complex products and services. By allowing clients to explore and customize products, you're creating brand loyalty and building investments without direct intervention. These customization features are a unique way through the buyer's journey to potentially buy products they can't buy otherwise. The self-guided exploration of configuration gives the buyer an individual experience they won't be able to duplicate anywhere else. In this specific project, we worked with complicated chemical plants, cement plants, and milk dryers machines, even modular construction. This complicated versions of configurators incorporate rules, algorithms, and artificial intelligence. This research project strive to improve environmental, economic, and social dimensions of sustainable manufacturing. At Halder Topso as one of these manufacturing companies, this project could enable them to reduce time and resources, increase their competitiveness, through a sustainable business model and marketing tool, 
which also leads to a cleaner production with higher revenue and quality, and with special focus on customer requirements. Halder Topso's own cost-benefit analysis shows that implementing a product configurator for a given solution costs around €40,000 in the first year. But after five years the company has saved €175,000 per project. Thanks for your time. Please contact me if you have any questions. My name is Raquel Noboa. I'm the founder and CEO of Fifty Shades Greener, a leading educational company teaching the hospitality industry how to reduce their business utilities through behavioral change of their team and implementing simple systems and processes in all their departments. Sustainability means many different things to many different people. It includes broad areas like community engagement, corporate social responsibility, landscapes and heritage. For us, at the Fifty Shades Good Inner Office, environmental sustainability in business means to reduce your impact on the environment. And there are three clear pillars of sustainability to work on. There are waste, water and energy. In order to run an environmentally friendly business, you need to reduce your business utilities. And the best part of this journey is that you will not only reduce your carbon emissions and impact on the environment, but you're also going to save money off your utility bills. It's a win-win situation for business owners. Yet, 99% of hotel managers I meet on my weekly routines don't have a handle on those three pillars of sustainability. I've worked in the hospitality industry for over 20 years and I first came challenged with the concept of green hotels in 2012 while I was working in Hotel Doolan. My general manager decided he wanted to run the greenest hotel in Ireland and appointed me as the hotel's green manager. To be honest, I was very apprehensive at the start. I had no idea what green hotels really meant, what to do or even how to get it started. And as it often happens in the hospitality industry, I had no budget to deliver results. By reading blogs and articles, I realized that being a green business meant reducing our impact on the environment. My first port call then were our utility bills or energy waste and water bills. I realized that for years, a bill would arrive to the accounts office, it would get paid and filed away. Nobody would ever looked at the information given about our consumption. And I'm afraid this is still the case for many business owners and many households. For example, I realized that our breakfast chef used to arrive to work every morning at 6am and turn every single machine on in the kitchen, even those machines that he would not use until later. When I asked him why, he explained this is just the way he'd always done things. It was his routine. And in fairness to him, nobody had ever showed him anything different. Now by observing our equipment, I knew that our main oven used 38 kilowatt hours of electricity. And I could easily calculate that if we were to turn off that oven for just one extra hour a day, we would reduce our electricity use by nearly 14,000 kilowatts, saving also 2,000 euros in just one year. This was just one machine off for one extra hour a day. So I sat down with the head chef to devise a comprehensive on and off checklist for our kitchen equipment. And by doing so, we realized the main oven did not need to be turned on until about 10 a.m saving us over 8,000 euros in one year. Within two years of the start of our green program, we managed to reduce our energy by 30%, our waste by 40%, and our water by 25%, just by training our team and implementing very simple systems and processes. This was my life bulb moment. If I had achieved those results, could I teach other people to achieve the same? And that's what Fifty Shades Greener is about. Starting small, learn to control and reduce your utilities by teaching your workforce how to change their own behavior around the use of water, energy, and production of waste. The Travel Agent Central Statistics Office released a report in 2019 that said 87% of global travelers want to travel more sustainably. And 78% of global travelers would pay more to stay in green certified accommodation. Yet, the industry is failing to align itself to those customer values. We need to listen to what society wants so we can create more sustainable industries in the future. Fifty Shades Greener is now growing internationally and we're seeking three types of partnerships. We're seeking training and consultancy agencies from all countries to become resellers of our green business online program. Just in the last month, we have secured three partners, AMA's hospitality group in the USA, Dalhousie University in Canada, and Sustainable Travel and Tourism Agenda in Kenya. 
Her second avenue for international growth is the creation of a licensed trainers network with other entrepreneurs that will be able to license or training content and create their own Fifty Shades Greener business in their own exclusive area. We launched this project in June 2020 and we already have two licensed trainers in the UK, heading the Fifty Shades Greener office in London and the south of England. Lastly, we're seeking national government contracts for those countries that want to support their hospitality workforce by providing educational programs, helping them reduce their carbon emissions and obtain a baseline of carbon footprint for their future green projects. This year, we're working with the Department of Education in Ireland, who have licensed all of our training programs to help upskill our workforce during this quiet period of business levels. My name is Raquel Novo. I'm the founder of Fifty Shades Greener with over 20 years experience working in the hospitality industry and eight years dedicated to running greener businesses. If you'd like to learn how to run a greener business, creating less impact to the environment, reducing your carbon footprint and having happier, loyal customers, you need to check out the Green Business Online program. It is the framework for any business with high energy, waste and water needs to learn how to reduce your utilities and instill a culture of sustainability within your team. The Green Business Online program contains all the tips and tricks I have learned as a green consultant over the past eight years. From learning how to measure and monitor your utilities, creating your green key performance indicators, working with a green team and marketing your efforts in the right way. All the actions I'm going to teach you can be implemented in a four month period. The course also includes charts, workbooks, templates and case studies to help you learn from my customers' successes. I cover a huge amount of environmental actions, food waste reduction, electricity, water use, even down to your heating and refrigeration systems. This is the A to Z to implement an environmental management system at your business from the comfort of your own office, anytime that suits you from any device. There is no time like the present to run your business 50 shades greener. For more information on how to partner with us, head over to our website 50shadesgreener.ie and thank you for taking the time to listen to my story today. Hello world and welcome. I'm Frederick, the CEO and co-founder of Hood Heroes, which is a market hub that is making sustainability everybody's everyday business. We exist because it's truly a new dawn today with an unignorable demand, supply and need for sustainability. Two out of three consumers worldwide will now buy or boycott a brand solely depending on how purposeful it is for our world environmentally and socially. Therefore, it is not surprising that the valuation of a sustainable brand has been leapfrogging that of a business as usual brand in the last 12 years. By now, in other words, the market potential for brand sustainability is simply so awesome that it speaks for itself. Therefore, it is quite a problem that the market is still disconnected since almost 40% of all people looking for the right sustainable brand to support ultimately give up due to a lack of awareness, trust and confusion. But what if the sustainability was profiled, rated and validated all in one place, powered by gamified crowdsourcing? That kind of solution would generate the awareness, differentiation and trust needed to connect sustainable demand and supply in the hectic everyday market. But what would this even look like? Well, I'm glad you ask. Simply imagine a kind of Metacritic for company sustainability that allows citizens to look up, compare and review the sustainability of any brand in the marketplace together with expert sources. Conversely, a place where companies can build brand awareness by showcasing their sustainability altogether, not only on the Hoodiers platform, but also their own websites and marketplace portals. Secondly, a place where they can build brand trust by collaborating with the ecosystem to prove and approve their sustainability. And thirdly, a place where they can build brand love 
by learning how to resonate with market expectations via big data analytics. We deliver these free value propositions to companies in three different ways, primarily as self-service features via a freemium SaaS business model with tiers priced similarly to other review platforms such as Trustpilot. Now, until these features can be automated on the platform, we are offering these as consultancy services, which also allows us to bootstrap and optimize their product market fit early on together with the customers. Thirdly, we license our data to marketplace portals so they too can offer their users a chance to compare companies on their sustainability. Now, the underlying magic at work here is our gamified crowdsourcing engine that not only offers a very scalable content creation system, but also a uniquely meaningful rating system that triangulates the value-driven perspective of citizens with the fact-driven perspective of experts. Now, the market we serve lies at the intersection between digital advertising and sustainable offerings. Fortunately, it's marvelous in size and growth, as it already today represents a six to eight billion dollar opportunity and only is expected to multiply several times within the next decade. Our team, our founders have excellence spanning everything from tech, sales, marketing, finance, and organizational development, and even better, of course, substantial expertise within sustainability, community platforms, and across the board, startup, scale-up experience. Zooming out to our core team and advisors, this picture only consolidates. Since we're both well-rounded, accomplished in all the right domain areas, and resonate well with the target audience, given our diversity in both age, gender, and nationality. Also, if there's any team that can pull this venture off, it's the one that is capable of attracting people like executive board members from IKEA and Mask, actual PhDs within sustainability, and many more fantastic profiles who are passionately dedicated to this mission. Okay, so how far have we come? Well, with close to zero money spent on advertising so far, and so many exciting product improvements still possible, I am proud to say that our self-funded venture in just two years already has attracted a great deal of recognition from media and awards, thousands of monthly users and companies profiled, company accounts in the double digits, and several portal partnerships with a good deal of paying customers happily served already, as well as amazing leads currently underway. Okay, so now I hope you have become interested in making sustainability everybody's everyday business and become a true hero of your hood. Thank you for listening. Now let's talk. Hello, my name is Purnima and I'm Vivian. We're the co-founders of Plantier. Our vision at Plantier is to inspire delicious and substantial plant-based options on menus everywhere, from restaurants and catering facilities to our kitchens at home. The UN IPCC report says that switching to a plant-based diet can help fight climate change, but finding options when eating out can be very challenging. We also recognise that individuals want to do more when it comes to sustainable action, but they are not sure in which area and then how to. We help address that by showing that our food choices can have a significant impact on the sustainability of our planet. We would like to see a growing number of individuals and the hospitality industry 
actively working towards the UN SDGs 12 and 13 through their menus and food choices. We see ourselves as the voice of the plant-based customer. We have both been through shared and personal experiences and have the necessary credentials to help us on this journey towards mindset shift. We work with individuals, partners in the food sustainability space and with restaurants and caterers. With individuals, we work to increase awareness and understanding about sustainable food choices while helping them to make gradual shifts in their food choices towards those that are plant-based and therefore more sustainable. We conduct workshops and work with individual clients. We partner with organizations in the sustainability space to enable the mindset shift to happen. We speak at events and work on projects with our partners who include restaurant unions, FMCGs, plant-based food product manufacturers, and sustainable tour companies. With restaurants and caterers, we work with chefs and restaurant owners to understand the shifting consumer preferences and the growth of the flexitarian and plant-based consumer. We certify restaurants who meet our criteria to recognize establishments that are serving delicious, substantial and sustainable plant-based options. So why are we doing this? By 2050, our population will approach 10 billion people. With this growing global population, there is a desperate need to transform our eating habits and use land effectively and regeneratively. This is putting an unmanageable demand on our already stretched natural resources. The report issued by the IPCC last year said that the West's high consumption of meat and dairy is fueling global warming. In his latest documentary, A Life on Our Planet, Sir David Attenborough said, we must change our diet. The planet cannot support billions of meat eaters. So to be able to support the growth in our global population and address the climate challenge, the Eat Lancet study suggests that we need to transform our eating habits towards a more plant-based diet, a planetary diet. According to the University of Oxford, the average world citizen needs to eat 76% less beef, 90% less pork and half the number of eggs with these figures being even higher for wealthier nations. At the same time, the study also says we need to triple our consumption of beans and pulses and quadruple the amount of nuts and seeds we consume. With the growing awareness of the negative impact of consumption of animal products on our environment, health and animal welfare from documentaries such as Cowspiracy, What the Health, forks over knives and game changers, there is a rapidly growing group of plant-based and flexitarian customers. Some industry analysts say that this is one of the largest disruptors that the food industry has ever seen. The growth in the plant-based sector isn't just a fad, but a real shift in consumer behavior with 400 million people actively choosing a plant-based diet. And this number is growing. What is exciting is that we are seeing a growth in the number of flexitarian and plant-based customers amongst younger parts of the population looking to be more sustainable in their daily habits and behaviors. In Denmark, the number of vegetarians, particularly millennial vegetarians, has increased and continues to do so. Universities across the world are shaping the next generation of influencers, policymakers, companies and world leaders. As a result of the University of Cambridge's sustainable food policy, they have reduced their carbon emissions by 33%. And one of the biggest changes they have made is no longer serving beef or lamb on their menus, significantly reducing the amount of meat and promoting more plant-based options. While there is a growing demand globally and here in Denmark, one of the biggest challenges is the limited availability of options when dining out. This is making it more difficult for individuals to reduce animal products in their diets. This is where Plantier comes in. We are looking to partner with like-minded organizations who share our vision and want to help overcome this barrier people face when eating out. Do you offer a product or service or have a network that together we can drive awareness, engagement and action, either with consumers or restaurants, cafes and caterers? 
If you do, then we would love to hear from you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jacobo Domingo. We are Roboto and we are innovating sustainability. Wildfires are a critical hazard. Every year, due to the effects of climate change, we see an increase in the size, severity, and frequency of these disasters. They destroy biodiversity, they kill animals, and they take human lives. A clear example of this is the bushfires in Australia that happened during the season of 2019 to 2020, where we saw that 18 million, where we saw that 18 million hectares of forestal surface burn across Australia. An emission of 430 million tons of CO2 was caused and this brought great struggles to the Australian government as they spent a hundred billion dollars in firefighting efforts and damages. Reconnaissance is a key part of these operations as firefighters need as much information as they can in order to make more educated decisions and know exactly where they need to be. This is currently being done through the use of helicopters and planes which are resource heavy, they're time consuming and they produce inaccurate data. This is why firefighters are looking into new technologies such as satellite imagery, which provides them an aerial view uh, of the wildfire, but still carries problems such as the getting blocked by smoke and clouds, the low frequency of emission of these images, and the low accuracy they bring. This is why drones are being implemented into reconnaissance as a cheaper, more surgical option that allows to get an overview of wildfires. They bring the advantage of allowing for fast deployment, and they can access hard to reach areas. But they are still being used in a very manually controlled manner with all the data being processed manually as well. This is where we come in. Roboto is committed to finding innovative and sustainable solutions using AI and robotics in order to fight the effects of climate change. We're doing this by becoming leaders in our field, pioneering the future of AI and finding creative ways to implement this technology in order to enhance human capability. We're keeping a responsible and ethical approach by using AI and robotics to make the world better and keeping our development process open and transparent. Our goal is to find solutions to important problems by supporting sustainable communities, by preserving nature and biodiversity, and by helping combat climate change. Aura, our autonomous welfare recognition and analytics drone, is a system that enables firefighters to follow the wildfire in real time, allowing them to be in the right place at the right time. With this product, we bring three value propositions. The first is that we want Aura to become the ultimate protector, helping reduce firefighter fatalities by keeping operators at a safe distance from the fire. We want to increase the efficacy of operations by allowing for better resource allocation, providing information on the size, the location, the direction, and the hotspots of the fire. Ultimately, we want to use this information to enable a faster response to allow firefighters to swiftly put out the fires and preserve nature and help reduce the damages caused to it. So how does it work? It's four simple steps. The emergency services arrive on site and deploy the drone. They then select a region of interest where they want to perform the reconnaissance. The drone flies out autonomously to this area and starts gathering information. Once this fire has been detected and calculated, it starts plotting all the information back into the user's hands on a map so they can get a clear overview of the situation and make more educated decisions, allocating the resources more efficiently. The future of this product is to be implemented into different platforms, such as fixed wing drones, which will enable us to increase our system capabilities by enhancing our operational radius, our flight time, and our maximum altitude. This will also enable us to look into different use cases since the core of our technology relies on our AI, we can retrain our models in order to implement them into different applications, such as first response, search and rescue, aerial inspection, wildlife control, just to name a few. We have received some success through the establishment of some pilot projects, one here in Denmark with the North Jutland Emergency Services, where we have gone out into 50 live operations. This has allowed us to test and improve our product and tailor it to the firefighter needs. We are now establishing a new partnership with the Graf firefighters in Spain, who are an elite force of firefighters and wildfire analysts. With them, we have been able to go out and demo our product in some prescribed fires all across Catalonia. The future of this collaboration will rely on knowledge sharing, product testing, and networking in order to allow us to put Aura on the map 
and help us make the best product possible. We have received some international recognition through the publication of two scientific articles and the reception of several international awards, including the Software Company of the Year Award by the Prestige Awards here in Denmark, Innovation Prize here in Denmark as well, and the third place at the STEM Awards, an international prize. The core values of our company rely on two separate pillars. One, being sustainability, as we believe on the importance of cultivating a safe prospect for the future of our planet and our civilization. We want to do this by allowing a more appropriate management of natural resources, by helping preserve nature and biodiversity, and by setting the SDGs at the forefront of our brand, paving the future into a more sustainable society. Ethics is the second pillar, as we believe in the importance of ensuring a responsible development and use of these technologies that could otherwise be misused. We believe in the transparent use and development of this technology. We believe that developers should be the ones to drive this conversation forward around ethics and regulations, and they should work closely with governments in order to ensure this technology reaches society in a safe and responsible manner. Ultimately, we believe in the mindful implementation of this technology into key areas where they can cause a lot of good and bring society and humanity forward, as opposed to being used as a force of evil. Thank you very much. We are Roboto and we are Innovating Sustainability. Hi, I am uh, Giuseppe Ragonese, CEO of Safety Environmental Engineering, academic spin-off of the University of Palermo. I am Donatella Termini, CIF, uh, scientific CIF for Safety Environmental Engineering. Our project is uh, Salamander uh, for intelligent solar energy production. This is because solar energy is increasing. Um, the problem is related to the reduction of energy production, uh, which is due to the presence of dust, dust of snow over the panel, but also of the safety condition of uh, solar installation because of the occurrence of fire events. The solution of all this problem is our product Salamander, which includes an uh, intelligent IOT system allowing the monitoring of the solar uh, installation solar panels and controlling a device which is called safety cover the other PV uh, which cleans the solar panel and avoiding their damages and the occurrence of fire events. Um, we think to go to market uh, throughout energy distributors or PV panel manufacturers uh, of installators or also throughout insurance agencies which could sell um, lower price contract by using our device. But also we, we think about the final users, so industries of uh, uh, historical buildings uh, and so on. It is important to use our product because no existing device allow as our product to uh, obtain at the same time the safety condition of the system, the monitoring of the paving panel performance and efficiency and their cleaning. We are interested to participate uh, for your project in order to commercialize our product. Okay, thank you for your attention. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. We are somepensyname.com. My name is Asim and I have more than eight years experience in retail and e-commerce management. I worked at one of the biggest uh, Danish fast fashion companies and uh, that gave me a possibility to see how our fashion industry works on the inside. I realized the undeniable negative impact that uh, fashion industry has on uh, both the uh, environment and people. Mm, more than 75 million people are working to make our clothes and 80% uh, of them are women between uh, 18 and 35 years old and we need to secure a sustainable and uh, responsible production and consumption in order to protect this large uh, vulnerable group of women. 
uh, at the same time, I thought that we are missing a place where one can find all uh, the unique, innovative and sustainably designed clothes like at one place at one time. Uh, so we uh, decided to do something about it. Uh, and we created some fancy name.com, a community for sustainable designers uh, that allows you to discover unique, innovative and sustainably designed clothes, uh, clothes that have a meaning, a purpose. More than 30 sustainable designers are currently on our platform and uh, our customers can uh, discover unique, innovative and sustainably designed clothes. Uh, they can be empowered in their sustainable choices through our categorization and information. And uh, they can support uh, women entrepreneurs as well as uh, local businesses through our platform. We uh, primarily focus on women between the ages of 18 and 44 years old who are environmentally conscious. Uh, they are primarily uh, millennials and uh, who are individualistic and uh, socially and environmentally aware. Uh, in fact, by 2025, millennials will comprise 75% uh, of the global workforce. Um, our primary markets are Scandinavia and the Netherlands, and um, um, our main competitors are such big uh, international uh, players as uh, Zalando or Aces.com. Our comparative advantage lies on the fact that we are focusing only on sustainable designers and uh, we're empowering our customers on uh, in their sustainable choices by creating a sustainability categorization uh, in cooperation with the leading uh, universities uh, of Denmark. The way we work, after sustainable designers apply or are scouted to be on our platform, um, we they can start selling their styles and uh, we get 30% from sales, whereas um, the designers will have to deliver the items. Our team consists of three persons. It's I'm the founder and CEO of the company uh, and with an experience in retail and e-commerce management, I uh, have a master's degree in uh, business economics. We have Jesper, who is our COO with a master's degree in finance and uh, an experience in business development. Um, and uh, we have Dovedas, who is our CTO, and uh, he has his bachelor degree in uh, software development and uh, an extensive experience in backend development. As a result, we are fully functioning, committed and skill balanced team um, with the same vision and values. Um, Jesper and I are working on all the strategic questions and uh, marketing as well as um, scouting new designers and um, agreeing with the universities on cooperation, whereas Dovedas is responsible for all the technical side of the business. We want to get an investment of uh, 1.5 million kroners. However, we are more interested in an investor that can uh, input and uh, share his knowledge and experience when it comes to the growth in uh, marketplaces and uh, help us grow uh, to become a leading uh, platform in Denmark for showcasing and nurturing the today's pioneers in uh, female and non-gender fashion.